Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Trail Pass. So you've seen this machine in some of our recent videos. It is a Kawasaki Mule Pro MX. So this is the mid-size mule and a machine that we absolutely love. But unfortunately, there's not a whole lot of coverage about this machine. A lot of people do spring for the full-size mule if you really have a large ranch or farm or something like that. Or you might pick a smaller mule if you're more budget-minded. But I think this might just be the sweet spot of the lineup. This Kawasaki Mule Pro MX has been a perfect hunting machine for us. And uh, honestly, I wouldn't change it for a, a different machine even today. We have had it for a couple years now, and it's definitely served all of our needs. But uh, it was time for an oil change, and I decided to do this one myself. So we did go with all Kawasaki branded stuff to do this oil change. Here is a look at the oil filter part number and we did use the actual Kawasaki oil. I'm sure there are uh, crossovers if you did want to use your favorite brand of both of these items, but uh, it did just obviously take one oil filter, and again, there is the part number, and it took just over one gallon of oil. So it took about four and a half quarts of oil. Again, I'm sure you could use whatever brand that you decide to use, but this machine is still under warranty, so we went with the Kawasaki stuff. So when Kawasaki designed this machine, they made maintenance very, very simple. So you can see we went ahead and flipped up the bed there and the seat bottom and that's all you have to do to do this oil change it is very very simple so looking here underneath the bed you can see you have great access to your engine and the spin on oil filter actually lives right here just right there on the side of the block uh, spun it right off put the new one on no issues at all it took only a couple of seconds now moving here underneath uh, the seat you can see you have your dipstick right here. The white label goes on top. Actually has a sticker right here that tells you that. Um, but that is where I added all the oil. Did use a funnel to keep everything nice and tidy, uh, but it was a really quick process. Also, while you have the seat up, it might be a good idea to check your air filter. It lives right here. Ours was very, very clean. Um, so no need to replace that. Just clean it up a little bit and all good to reuse. Now, we'll go ahead and move underneath the machine so you can see where the drain plug is. So looking underneath the machine now, you can see there's your rear wheels and the entire bottom of the machine is uh, covered in a plastic skid plate, which is really nice, gives you good coverage. But there is one hole in the skid plate, does give you really good access. And you can see the drain plug right there. It is the darker one. It actually sticks down a little bit lower and it is a 17 millimeter. So really, really easy to get to. Uh, my drain pan slid right under here as well and made for a really quick oil change. So as you can see there, Kawasaki really designed this vehicle well, made maintenance super, super simple. So you might not have to take it to your dealership if you don't mind a half an hour of getting your hands dirty. So uh, that is really, really appreciative. You know, a lot of people do use these for work. Again, we use ours just as a hunting rig, but uh, you know, either way, there's no point making things more complicated than what they need to be. And this is definitely an oil change you could tackle on your own. Now, a little bit about our ownership experience. Now we have had this for a couple of years now. We're right at 50 hours and a couple hundred miles. Uh, so again, we're not using this day in and day out. We do use it for hunting. We use it to pull logs out of the way, uh, haul all of our gear. And uh, it's, it doesn't have a ton of miles on it, but the miles it does have, it's certainly been used. Now, a couple of things that we've added to it, we do have the Kawasaki brush guard, and we've also added a super winch there to the front. We have a plexiglass windshield and the Kawasaki plastic roof. Uh, moving around here to the rear of the machine, we do have, um, you can see right up there, a rear view mirror, which does make it really nice. That one is by Kimimoto. Uh, we just got a cheap Nylite, uh, LED pod right there for the rear uh, really helps to light up everything uh, you know whether we're getting up to the tree stand at nighttime or you know loading up for the next morning whatever uh, really does make it really nice we also have this Kimimoto uh, soft storage bag that locks on to the roll headache ra headache rack I guess you call it there on the back of this machine uh, also moving back here we do have the Kawasaki rear bumper and then uh, the bed of this machine is metal, does have plastic sides. And we just took a regular horse mat from Tractor Supply, cut that to fit, and it's been a really great bed mat for our uses so far. It is really thick and it has been holding up really well. Uh, and that way, if we're throwing whatever in the back, whether it's logs or uh, chainsaws or whatever else, it uh, does kind of protect that bed a little bit more. Now, 
One thing we did have to do, completely self-inflicted, not an issue with Kawasaki. Uh, we were hauling uh, some salt blocks uh, for the squirrels, of course. And um, one thing that did, obviously salt does cause corrosion. And all of these screws that were in the tailgate did start to get corroded. So uh, we did go and get some stainless steel sheet metal screws. And uh, we replaced all of the screws with those stainless steel ones. Hopefully they'll hold up a little bit better. Uh, but you can see there in the tailgate, a lot of those were corroded just from the salt, uh, starting to corrode those screws. And uh, I think that should hold up a lot better. I just got that this pack of 35 from Lowe's. You can see, see we still have several of them left over. So uh, definitely avoidable. Uh, don't haul around salt and uh, you should be fine, obviously. Uh, but, you know, really quick fix there, and we're all good and ready to go. And that's really the only issue we've had with this machine so far. And honestly, it was more of a cosmetic one uh, than anything else. So overall, this has been a really great machine that just continues to impress us. It really has been able to handle everything that we've thrown at it, and still a small enough price tag and size that you know it'll fit down the trail but it also doesn't put too big of a hurt on your wallet you know we've come to a time where you know these thirty thousand dollar side by sides are all too common and to be completely honest with you i see a lot of them rolling around here where the side by side is worth more than the truck and trailer that they're using to move it around so uh, we chose not to be in that situation and i think this is a really great machine for us the power steering is absolutely fantastic and a must if you're driving this around in the mountains. Uh, it does really, really help. And the standard doors on this machine uh, are really, really good. They do have some adjustment on them. We just adjusted those up. Uh, the adjustment's actually right there. And um, the doors just started to get a little bit of a rattle over time. We just adjusted those two nuts and they're, they're actually in slots. So you can just adjust them a little bit, tighten everything up. And uh, all of those issues went away. But overall, this has been a fantastic machine, done everything that we needed to do. And you know, now that we've done the oil change on it and it, how simple it was, it makes us just love and appreciate this machine even more. So let us know what you think in the comment section. Did this help you out? And do you have a Kawasaki Mule Pro MX of your own or you consider getting one? I would definitely recommend it. So thank you all very much for watching. Have a fantastic week, everybody. We'll catch you next time.